You got to stop feeling sorry for yourself because here's the truth. Nobody really cares. What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Steve Holbrook and as usual, guess who's fired up? I'm fired up. Today we're talking about 10 ways to stay positive. Look, it's no secret when you look in the news or you get on social media or you get around your peer group, there's a lot of negativity out there. There's a lot of people that are trying to impose their opinion on you and if you don't adopt some of their opinion, it just gets worse. It's crazy. So what can you do? Well, there's a strategy to staying positive. You don't just wake up every single day and feel positive for the entire day or for your entire life. It takes work. The most positive people that you know have worked on it over the years and it may come easy to them now and it may seem like it comes easy to them now, but it's just a small amount of positive things over a long period of time versus a small amount of negative things or destructive things in your life that creates a negative mindset. So we're gonna get right into it. But please, before I start, if you enjoy this episode, please like it, share it, give it some love. I promise you we'll continue to bring this high quality content. All right, let's get into it. Number one way to stay positive in no particular order, stop playing victim. Stop playing victim. And you might say, wow, that's, that's a pretty intense number one for right off the bat. I think it's really important to get that on the table. You can't be a victim, you can't be playing victim and expect to have a positive mindset or ex expect to stay positive. What do I mean by being a victim? I mean by playing victim, like feeling sorry for yourself and seeking sympathy. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, if you're the lead character in your victim pity party, it is gonna be nearly impossible, nearly impossible for you to stay positive through the process. So number one is you, you, you gotta stop being a victim. You gotta stop feeling sorry for yourself because here's the truth. Nobody really cares. Nobody really cares. I got some problems. I got Crohn's disease. I, you know, I have eight feet of bowel missing and people care and they love me and they care about me. But when I go home at night and the lights are off, nobody's thinking about me and my problems except for me. So when I say people don't care, at the end of the day, what people really care about is their own problems and all of our problems are definitely secondary to that. So feeling sorry for ourselves for being a victim is only hurting ourselves. That's the first one. Number two, practice gratitude. Practice gratitude. Yeah, I know I talk about it all the time, but it helps you lead with love and not fear. How good would that feel? If you're leading your day or your day is leading you into fear and you're scared all the time and you're always worried about what's going to happen, that's not, that's not a positive mindset. That's not you being positive. If you can wake up and find a moment to practice gratitude and be grateful for what you already have, I'm telling you that this is a major key. I talk about it in every other YouTube video because it's so important. If you are not grateful for what you already have, you're gonna live in fear and you're gonna live in scarcity and you're gonna have a negative outlook and a negative mindset. So if you wanna know one of the keys to staying positive, it's practice gratitude. Number three, you ready? Ask yourself the right questions. I believe that our life in large part is determined by the quality of questions that we ask ourselves. You may have heard that before. Well, I haven't heard a lot of people elaborate on that, so what do I mean by that, right? Let me tell you exactly what I mean by that. So what are some positive questions that we could ask ourselves? Well, let me give you a few. What am I most happy about in my life right now? There's a positive question. What am I most happy about in my life right now? How about what am I most excited about in my life right now? Like when's the last time you sat down and you wrote a list of all the things that you're most excited about, right? Or the things that you're most grateful for, the things that you're enjoying the most of your life right now. We're in a bit of a crazy era right now. We're on lockdown, right? So it's easy to get scared and it's easy to go kind of in your corner and hide. But what if you wrote down, what are you most enjoying about life right now? Or what are you most committed to in your life right now? Or who do you love the most in your life right now? Or what are you committed to long-term to achieve your goals? Those are positive questions. 
Negative questions are things like, when are you going to lose that weight, dummy? When are you going to stop being fat? When are you going to stop being negative? When are you going to stop being broke? Those aren't great questions to be asking yourself unless they're in context with what needs to be happening in that moment. But overall, you want to make sure that you're asking yourself the right questions. And by asking yourself the right questions, what you're doing is you're, 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 you're tricking your mindset into thinking positively, right? And usually forward thinking, right? And there's some gratitude baked in there. Very, very, very important that you change the questions that you're asking yourself. I'm telling you right now, it could change your life. Number four, use triggers. My good friend, Ed Milet, my mentor, Ed Milet, talks about this all the time. So I got this from him. So I'm gonna give him some street cred. Use triggers. What do I mean by that? The other day, my son was running around the house and when my son runs around, he's always snapping. He's, he's always snapping, he's so happy. But I, I know why he does it. Cause it's constantly putting him in a state where he's excited, he's focused, his mind is, is running a lot like his dad's. I also use snapping as a trigger. For example, I'll be in, sometimes in the shower in the morning and sometimes in the morning, it's when the negative mindset for me seeps in. It's cause I'm, I'm tired and I'm getting the wheels turning. Right, so sometimes for me, that's the part of the day that I have to be the most careful for. So sometimes I'm in the shower and I start thinking about negative things, but then all of a sudden I do this, or I do this, and then I speak out loud and I'll actually use some humor and I'll say something like, wow, that was, that was a sure negative mindset, or wow, you really trolled that person in your mind, or wow, let's just not say that out loud to other people, or wow, really? You're Mr. Mindset, you're Mr. YouTube, you're Mr. Social Media, right? You're Mr. Executive Vice Chairman of your company, and you're thinking about that stuff, and I'll actually say that aloud in the shower. I talk to myself all the time, especially in the shower, and a lot of times my wife will say, who are you talking to? A lot of times I'm just triggering, and I'm, and I'm literally snapping out of that mindset or I'm doing one of these and then I usually laugh or I chuckle just like this and I go, what, what are you doing, Holbrook? What are you thinking? Why would you think that? And, I, and by speaking it out loud and laughing about it, I'm calling myself out. It's so powerful and it works and it's gonna help you immediately trigger out of that negative mindset and ideally get into that positive outlook, right? As a way of staying positive. Number five, morning calmness. My mindset is my kingdom and I have to protect the kingdom at all costs. So what does that mean? That means I got to protect my mindset. That means in the morning when I wake up, I'm not taking phone calls. I'm not interacting with people. It, it, or it's a very, very short list of who I'll interact with you don't know what kind of information is coming back to you. I mean, it's scary enough for you to hop on the news channel in the morning or on social media in the morning because you can't control the message coming back. And in the morning, typically, people are the most vulnerable to get negative. So if you're exposing yourself or potentially exposing yourself to that teammate that calls you, let's say someone calls you at like 6.01 in the morning and you pick up the phone and you're like, hey girl, what's going on? And she's like, oh... I'm fighting my boyfriend and I, I want to quit the business and blah, blah, blah. My mom's mean to me and all this crap. And you take all that on at like six in the morning. All of a sudden you hang up that phone and your mind is starting to turn. So I'm, I'm talking about things like take some time and maybe for you it's meditation, right? I meditated yesterday uh, in the morning for about 22 minutes. It was unbelievable, but maybe meditation is not for you. Maybe you need to take a walk. Maybe you need to take a breath. Maybe you just need to take a moment in the morning and read 10 pages. Find some calmness in the morning. And what it'll do is it'll give time for the concrete to set. And once the concrete is set in your brain, the mindset is set, then you can expose yourself to the world. Number six, make a list of pressing issues. If you're like me, you're going to love this one. I need to write down all the things that I'm freaking out about, all the things that I'm stressing out about. And I write them down on a list and they instantly make me feel better by writing them down because I look at each one of them and I tackle each one of them one at a time and I jot down four or five things that I can do and take action on that's going to help me with that area. And look, sometimes there's nothing you can do to alleviate the stress. 
right? Maybe a loved one is in the hospital, maybe a loved one is sick, and, and maybe even somebody is, you know, preparing to pass away. Um, maybe that's when you need to turn you know, to your creator, or to the spiritual side. But you need to write a list down <clears throat> of all the things that are pressing, and you need to tackle them one at a time. And I think what you'll figure out is when you write them down, the list isn't as big as you thought it was gonna be. It's amazing how like two or three things can totally control your entire day, your entire week, your entire year. And for some people, one or two things that happened in their childhood control their mindset for their entire life. And they literally die with those things on their mind. Can you imagine wasting your entire life on something that you had no control over that happened previous to you? Listen, write it down and work through it. And if it's some serious stuff that you need to work through, you might need to get some help. But, but for the most part, these are things that you can work through day to day. And when you write them down, I'm telling you it's going to make you feel better. Number seven, create a positive environment. Look, being positive is as much environmental as it is mental. You need to create a positive environment, whether that's at your home, whether that's in your office or in your personal space. So what can you do to create that, create that positive environment? Well, for me, the most important part of a positive environment where I'm interacting with other people, look, if it's an environment where it's just me, that's easy to control, right? I control what's in the environment. I control what's on my computer. I control what's in my ears. I control what's coming at me. But if you're in an environment where there's other people, maybe it's a spouse or kids or work related, right? You got to protect your environment. So the most important thing I believe you can do to protect your environment, you ready? Clear communication. Clear communication for me is the number one way to create a positive environment. Just think about it. When there's lack of communication in the home, there's lack of teamwork in the home. And when there's lack of teamwork in the home, guess what? This starts to happen at work when there's not clear communication. If you can't clearly communicate your intentions or your feelings or the, the or your thoughts about something, right? There's going to create, this is going to happen in the work environment. Clear communication, in my opinion, is one of the number one ways to create a positive environment in the home, right? At work, wherever you are, that's the key. Number eight, the eighth key to staying positive, move your body, move your body or get physical. Listen, motion creates emotion. Motion creates emotion. That's why when I'm making phone calls, I'm, I'm walking around on my cell phone because when I'm moving around, like when I'm making sales calls or calls for my business, right? I'm moving around because the motion of me moving around creates emotion. Well, when you physically move your body and maybe it's a, you know, maybe it's a workout or, or maybe it's, you know, maybe it's something different, but you got to get up, you got to move your body. It brings more oxygen to your blood and you know what happens? It creates emotion. Here's my experience. When you get physical, right? Physical fitness, the emotion that that creates is mostly positive, is mostly positive. There's a really, really, really good chance. If you just got up every day and moved your body for 20 minutes, like you have not been moving it for the last little bit, that'll, that alone, that alone could put you into that positive mindset, that alone. But so many people overlook it, right? I'm not talking about becoming a professional bodybuilder. I'm talking about getting up and going for a walk, walking around your block, taking 20 deep breaths outside, getting out of your normal environment and doing something physical is going to be one of those keys. And that alone, that alone could help you stay positive. Number nine, upgrade your associations, upgrade your associations. Look, if people aren't going to grow with you, then you need to upgrade them. Not out of pretentiousness, not because you think you're better, but because you need a higher level of consciousness. If you want to grow your life, if you want to get to the next level, you have to get around people that are at the next level of thinking. You're becoming the people that you're hanging around the most. And the higher you want to fly, the more you need to seek those people. In my opinion, in my opinion, mental toughness is largely caught. It's not always taught. You need to catch from people around you how to be positive. You need to catch 
from people, what techniques they use, what mindset they employ. When something happens to one of your leaders or one of your mentors or one of the people that are further ahead than you on the level of consciousness, I want you to watch how they handle it. I want to watch how they take a minute or, or even a few seconds and they pause before they answer. And usually when they answer, they, it's usually with a question because they want more details. They want to eliminate the emotion of the whole situation. That's what you get when you upgrade associations. If you're hanging around the same ducks day in and day out, the same ducks at work, right? The same ducks in your potentially your home environment, right? Or if you're single, there's nobody at home but you, which is not great either because you're not going to coach yourself to the next level. So now you're left with just the people at work. Well, are they reading books? Are they upgrading their associations? Are they understanding a higher level of consciousness? See, you're just, you might be just sucked in with the paycheck. And you might think that's the most important part, but it's not. Who are the associations in that environment? And where are they going? Where are they headed? By upgrading your associations, that is, that is one of the keys to you getting in that positive state, but more importantly, staying in that positive state. Because if the people around you aren't growing, you know what happened? It might be positive now, but there's gonna come a point in time where that, where that lake, that body of water turns into a slough. Because without fresh water coming in, there's a little film that grows over top and it's not a lake anymore. It is in fact a slough and sloughs start to stink. They start to turn green. That's like your associations and that's like you if you're not constantly upgrading them. Think of it as fresh water coming into the lake. Number 10, number 10, my 10th key to staying positive. You ready? Let go. You have to let go of who you were to become who you need to be. You have to start letting go to what happened to you in the past. Who you were in the past year, who you were a month ago, who you were yesterday has nothing to do with where you're going. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new era for you. And if you're hanging on to things that happened to you a year, two, three, four years ago, you have to find a way to let them go. You, you have to have a conversation with that person, even if they don't want to reciprocate, even if they don't want to make up, you have to make an effort and you have to let go and you have to be at peace with it. Because if you're hanging on to something and it's dominating your thoughts or it's coming back in your thought pattern once a week or once a month, and it's just, it's seeping in there. I'm telling you what, you're never gonna get to the level that you need to. You're never gonna find a way to stay truly positive throughout the process if you're not willing to let go of the people and the things that affected you in the past. I'll tell you what, you start letting go, that'll definitely, definitely help you stay positive. All right, guys, I hope you guys got some value to that. I was so fired up to, to do this YouTube today. This stuff means a lot to me. These are things that I've used over my life and my career to help me get to where I am today. So I appreciate the love. Please like it, share it, give it to somebody on your team that needs to see it. And of course, subscribe and we'll see you soon. Thanks, guys.